Um, I want to start by acknowledging the sad death of Shane McGowan. His legacy of iconic music is a testament to his genius and on behalf of the Social Democrats I want to offer my condolences to his family, his friends and, and all who loved him. Tónista, I'm wondering how high is too high? How high will rents have to go before your government says enough and actually does something about them? We have another report out today detailing sky-high rents. This time it's from the RTB. Rents for new tenancies are up an enormous 11.6%. Across the country, that means an average rent of €1,574 per month. Just three years ago, when you entered government, average rents were €1,226. So that's an increase of nearly €350 Euro per month since you took office. This is the price of a Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael and Green Party government to renters out there. An extra 4,200 per year going to their landlords since you took office. Tónisha, do you know how difficult it is for students, workers and families to scrape together an extra €4,200 per year? Do you know that families go without, without proper meals, without heating, without warm coats in the winter, just to pay their rent? Do you know how hopeless and trapped people feel because they can't afford to move out of their childhood bedroom? Do you know how difficult it is to save for a house when almost all of your income is going towards your soaring rent? If you know all of this, then why won't you do anything about it? Why do you continue to gaslight the nation and come in here and tell us that this failure is somehow a success? I can guess one of the things you might say, Tonishta, you'll say rent increases for existing tenants are lower, but their rents went up by 5.3% and average rents are 1,332. So what you should acknowledge is that those figures are just more evidence that the rental market is broken. The maximum rent increase in rent pressure zones is supposed to be 2%. Your minister bought that rule in. But clearly, landlords up and down the country are ignoring that upper threshold and charging whatever they like. And why wouldn't they? Your government has overseen tenancy laws that amount to zero rights for renters. For no reason at all, tenants can be evicted. Meanwhile, the regulator, the RTB, is not so much toothless as comatose. It either doesn't have the power, the resources, or the interest to pursue landlords who breach the regulations. Tonishta, I've listened to members of your government make earnest promises on housing for years. You say it's your top priority, but every year the crisis gets worse. Rents become even more unaffordable. The prospect of owning a home gets more out of reach and record you, number of people are homelessness. We're all tired of these broken promises. Tonish, it's time for action. Will you freeze rents for three years, introduce a ban on no-fault evictions and introduce a rent register so there's some transparency around rents? Tonish, please. Again, Deputy, uh, we all recognise, and I've said it already, that housing is the most uh, uh, significant social issue we face in this country. But I'm interested in coming up with solutions. I've heard very little, precious little from you, other than a good descriptive analysis of the current situation. But actually no solutions. And freezing rent is not a solution. It is not a solution because it would cause a further exodus from the rental market, which would reduce supply, and would result in ever-increasing rental, rental prices. And that is the reality. Supply has to be the solution here. And we have a range of schemes that we've developed to increase housing um, supply. And we've brought in the, rent, the, the tax credit uh, to help people to alleviate the pressures of increasing rents. And we have strengthened very significantly the powers of the RTB. It's not fair or accurate to say that nothing has been done in terms of regulation. Um, in respect of, 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 the, of, the, of the rental um, situation. Um, the RPZs themselves, you've mentioned the rent pressure zones. 75% are now covered by rent, rent pressure zones. Now this RTB index does not capture compliance and it's not as simple as you've articulated in terms of uh, breaches of the 2% or not. But there are sanctions and there are significant resources have been allocated to the RTB in, in respect of, of, of that issue. But an ESRI study of the RPZs with the Department of Housing have said that if, if it wasn't for the RPZs, 
uh, and disowning, the inflation in ho house rent would be notably higher. So they are impactful, and they are um, have, have not withstanding the very high levels of rent um, uh, of, uh, across the country, which is a function of supply. And we just, and, and in, in the last three years alone, since this government came in, over, about 100,000 ho new homes will be delivered. We had COVID-19, which did impact initially in the first year and a half of government in terms of house construction. Uh, but we have, and we've also brought in the tenant in situ scheme, uh, with about 2,500 uh, uh, sales now being progressed um, on that scheme alone. We've brought in the, uh, the, the cost rental which is rents are 25% below the market level uh, and up to uh, quite a substantial number of, of, of cost rental homes have been made available. That's a whole new form of, of, of tenure and we're going to drive that on uh, in the months to come. So there's been a very wide ranging number of schemes to get housing supply up and ultimately that is key. And I would argue, by the way, that over the last three years, a lot of the negativity around the rental market and proposals for freezing and so on like that has had a negative impact on supply. Um, and that is an issue that we continue to need to focus on. How do we get more houses into the market, into the rental market in particular, uh, so that we can get supply down and get, uh, get the rents, uh, at least the rate of increase down, and, and develop schemes as we have in terms of social housing and in terms of the cost rental that we can Thank you, make it, give options to people for much lower rents than currently is the case. Deputy Kearns. Well, so listening to you, it's fair that this is some kind of big conspiracy to make Fianna Fáil and the government look bad when they're doing everything that they can. But if it is, I'm afraid that the RTB, the ERSI and loads more are in it with me. Um, you may not want to admit it, but the facts are the facts. And the facts are that rents in this country under your watch are a runaway train. And you keep coming in here and telling us that everything's under control. But every year it gets worse. The housing crisis has become a housing disaster. At what point will you actually just admit that your approach is not working? Because people out there can't afford any more of these mistakes. Since you came into office in 2020, you've cost renters an additional 4,200 a year. How much more will people have to pay for this failure and this denial? You say housing is the biggest social issue that we face. I agree with you. Why don't you act like it and do something about it? You're constantly asking for solutions. I know there are bigger solutions around supply. All of those things are absolutely necessary and I'm not disregarding them, but given the rising, consistent rising figures in homelessness, will you introduce a rent freeze, bring back the ban on no fault evictions and introduce a rent please. register so renters at least know if they're being ripped off? First of all, Deputy, I think you're a very there's a huge dearth of, of proposals and solutions from you and your party in respect to housing. I don't see any detailed um, proposals um, over and above what's in housing for all the government's uh, comprehensive housing plan in terms of increasing supply. You've made a passing reference in, 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 in your question there too. Yeah, you do accept that there's higher, bigger need for housing supply. Housing supply is the key. Uh, and I think some of the policies that you've put forward in terms of banning and freezing uh, would actually reduce supply uh, and would have a very negative impact on the rental market. And that would mean higher prices again. And I do have to challenge that simplistic notion that we can simply ban everything for three years and everything will be the same or it'll get better. If you ban anything for three years, people are not going to... People get out of the market and do other things. But, but, uh, we've seen that. Um, and we've tried to clamp down on some of that um, in terms of Airbnb and so on like that and uh, provide for planning permissions. So as to try and keep a, high, a, a higher number of houses in the rental market uh, so that we can try and keep a downward pressure on prices. But the way I would respectfully suggest that your directing policy or suggesting policy should go would actually reduce supply and increase Thank prices you, even more. Deputy Dennis Nocton, please.